Mom. The Duhigs came to Napa from Lowell, Massachusetts, through the Isthmus of Panama. When the Duhigs settled their territory, Napa had not been a town yet. The first maps of Napa County say lands of Duhigg. My great-grandfather grew grapes with the intent of making wine, and getting to carry on that legacy means everything to me. Being able to produce something from this land that he would be proud of essentially makes me proud. The importance of having a wine brand, the Duhigg, that's carrying on a tradition, and it's marking a legacy for the Duhigs in this valley. It'll give our children something that hopefully they can grow into and continue with as a way of their life and economic stability. As they grow and the more they tend the vineyard, the deeper their understanding of the intrinsic connectedness that we have. It's not just putting a plant in the ground. I'm proud as a parent to have my children out there working with us. Last year they would have been already finished, so that would be like a sign of more growth in grapes. Today we picked out the leaves out of the newly picked grapes. It was fun because you got to see all the tractors and all the bins. We also have a vision for this property and our kids to be diversified. We have a greater vision that has to do with giving back to our community. Currently we do that in certain ways. We donate through the 4-H program. We're able to buy farm-raised meat locally and we actually donate it straight to the food bank. The temperature this morning was about 56 degrees. That's chilly and we like it that way because picking grapes when it's cold preserves the integrity of the fruit. And then when the grapes arrive to the winery, the temperature is such that we need minimal input once it's in tank. The things that I look for are prunish characters, uh, black fruit, and when you spit chomped up skins and seed out, the color of that juice is purple. So once we've harvested all the fruit and it's in the bins and it arrives at the winery, we take those bins after they've been weighed and we slowly dump them onto a conveyor table where then they're sorted again for removal of any leaf material or small bits of stem. The grapes are then destemmed, which is the process of taking the berry off of the rachis and the rachises then get dispensed out the rear of a crusher destemmer. That drops into an auger which is taken to a tank. Once it's in tank, the tank is chilling, the fruit came in cold. Once I decide that we've had adequate cold soaking for extracting premature color, we add yeast at a specific amount and rate. We give the tank its appropriate amount of nutrition based on its levels that it came in with the vineyard. We give it just enough to make the yeast really healthy and happy. And then we start fermentation once the yeast are actively growing. And that fermentation, for me, I like to do everything kind of nice and slow. There's not a specific recipe because every harvest is different. The condition of the fruit is going to be different depending on what Mother Nature bestowed upon us during that growing season. I go through every single morning, smell, taste, and check color on the tanks to ensure that the fermentation strategy matches the extraction and the flavor that's coming out of the fruit at that time. Once the tank is dry then, we take what is called the free run. And then it'll live in barrel for two years and get topped. And there's no recipe or timeline that I'm fixed to. It's basically when I think the wine tastes right. We'll pull it out of barrel and we'll bottle it and ready it for release. 